Welcome back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try, try and take advantage of this whole uh, set of thinking about the what I was calling the proton waterfall. And um, in particular, I want to try and figure out how much free energy is associated with such a proton waterfall. And prior to doing that, we need to just say a few words about several case studies where the existence of a proton gradient is exploited in order to do useful things, as shown on the left. What you see is the uh, flagellar motor for a bacterium such as E. coli that spins around and turns the flagellum, thus propelling the cell forward. And on the right-hand side, you see the ATP synthase, which also spins. It can spin in both directions, but it spins by uh, exploiting the proton gradient and then using that to add phosphate groups onto ADP, thus synthesizing ATP. I wanted to just point out that, you know, there's some really cool and classic single molecule experiments about the ATP synthase. And these uh, constitute putting an actin filament, which is fluorescently labeled, onto the rotary part of the ATP synthase, and then watching as this thing turns around. And as you can see in the bottom with the film strip, and as you can see on the upper right, this is the angular position as a function of time, you'll see that this thing rotates in 120 degree increments. So the thing that we're going to do, the calculation that I have in mind, is for what, what I will refer to as the proton motive force. And this is precisely exploiting the delta G associated with the concentration gradient and using it for useful work. We've already talked about the case of extracting the lifting of a weight using that work, but here I'm gonna, it's gonna be a little bit more subtle where we're gonna talk about the free energy that's tied up with moving uh, an ion from one side to the other. So, so if I have a delta G tote, that's gonna be equal to delta U minus T delta S. And from earlier, I'm not gonna redo the calculation. From earlier, we recall that this whole piece is equal to KBT and then log of C1 over C2. So that tells us uh, about the entropic part. And I've, I've actually exploited and discussed that quite a bit already. So I'm not going to, as I say, I'm not going to belabor it. But you'll recall that what the, where this comes from is we take one ligand from one side and move it to the other. And what that does is it leaves a net reduction by one on one side and a net increase by one on the other. And we just work out the change in the number of microscopic states in order to use the Boltzmann formula, which is you know that S is equal to KB log W. So we, we simply calculate what W is, and on the basis of these questions of how many ligands there are on each side, and that led us to that result. So what about the delta U? The delta U, I'm going to first just tell you what it is, which is equal to Q delta V. So this is the charge on the ion of interest, and this is the potential difference across between my two reservoirs. So if the reservoir on the left is held at potential V1, and the reservoir on the right is held at potential V2, then the potential difference, delta V, is equal to V1 minus V2. And I just uh, I remind you that work is equal to force times distance. I'm being very elementary in my thinking here. The force is equal to Q times E, where uh, E is the electric field. So this is the force, which is the electric field times the charge. You might remember that uh, that the definition of the electric field is the force per unit charge, that a test charge uh, that you would measure by putting a charge at a, a given position. So there's this electric field that's associated with that. And so, you know, this, this thing's equal to QED. And E, the electric field, can also be written as uh, minus dV by dx, or in our case, it's equal to minus uh, V over Okay, so I've got, I'm thinking about the case in which uh, I've got a, basically a linear, um, a linear uh, potential profile across. 
So, so at any rate, what, what came out of all this is then that I have delta G is equal to Q delta V and then minus KBT log of C1 over C2. And this is what I will refer to as the proton motor force, although we can take it a little bit farther by noting that C1 is equal to 10 to the minus pH 1 and C2 is 10 to the minus pH 2. Just a reminder on the definition of pH. pH is, tells you how to compute the concentration of hydrogen ions. So if I have a given pH, like 6, then that means that uh, the concentration is 10 to the minus 6 in molars. So it's, uh, it's micromolars. So that's fine. So I can, uh, I can plug that in up here, and I'm left with Q delta V plus, uh, maybe I'll keep it this way for a moment, minus KBT, and then log to the uh, 10 to the pH 1, or pH 2, minus pH 1, uh, which is equal to Q delta V, and then minus t KBT times delta pH times log of 10, which is order 2.3. And um, my, last, my last comment is to say that, um, is that if I have uh, a delta V, a typical delta V might be something like 100 millivolts. If you go review what the typical membrane potential is, it's, I, I'm gonna carry around in my head that it's of order 100 millivolts. And, um, and so I also have the conversion factor that 1 40th of uh, a volt is equal to KBT. So let's see if I can figure this out. So this is um, this is a tenth of a volt. So so Q delta V for our case. I guess I should really use it. Well, okay. uh, Q delta V is going to be equal to on the order of, uh, how do I want to think about this? So uh, about four kBT. And so, you know, the, the, the total delta G, there's gonna be a part due to the uh, potential, this charge, you know, that just that piece, and then plus the entropic contribution. And this guy we just got through saying is something like four kBTs, and the entropic piece. Well, you know, we we already know that um, this is this is something on the order of two point three kBT times the delta pH. So, you know, if I have a, a pH unit difference of one, then that's two point three kBTs, and, and so on. You know, some, something like that. So the net thing is, you know. This is few to 10 kBTs is the, is the idea that I would want to get across. Okay, why did I go through this? I, I went through this because I, I wanted to, uh, to just give an impression of the idea of, of using the proton waterfall and extracting useful work out of it for doing things like turning the ATP synthase shown over here on the right just wanted to give a sense of what the, the energy scales are in KBT units so that we, moving forward, we have an impression of the scales. And then it was also useful for me to comment that, uh, let's see, that 140th of volt um, is KBT, 140th of electro, electron volt. I should have been more precise about that. Um, so, okay, that, that's, I think those are the key points that I wanted to make for this little brief vignette.